Hello and welcome once again to the Smart Money, Dumb Money show. And I am your host, as usual, Keith Richards. I'm president and chief portfolio manager at Value Trend Wealth Management, and I'm a technical analyst. Well, they say that good things come in small packages. So today we're going to talk about small cap stocks. And we're going to look at both U.S. small cap stocks and Canadian small caps. Now, sometimes good things come in big packages, and I've got my my good buddy beside me. I think I'll I'll take the camera off, and you, you'll see him. This is my this is my big bull mastiff, 160 pound dog, and uh, he sometimes records these with me. So sometimes you're not even aware that Obi's been in the picture. So I wanted to start off this presentation by looking at the Russell 2000 because that's the classic small cap index. Now it covers the US uh, small caps and like the name suggests, it covers about 2000 stocks to be exact. And I wrote this down because I knew I'd forget 1955 stocks. So it's not quite 2000, but close enough. All right. So I want to talk about the differences and I'm going to look at the differences in the charts. So let's first, well, my dog winds in the background. Yeah, big, tough looking dog winds about everything. Um, so what I'm, I'm going to show you here is the Russell 2000 chart. And what I want you to note is that it was in a long base. It, it, it fell quite a bit in 2022, like everything did. And then it moved into a very, very long base. And actually from basically the beginning of 22 until uh, this year, really, it, it, uh, it, it stayed in that base and then recently broke out just really in the past three months or so. So it's, it's been quite a, a move and uh, we always like base breakouts. So this is a bullish chart from a pure technical point of view. But a couple of things I wanna talk about and then we'll compare this to the Canadian small caps. But the first thing I wanna talk about is seasonality. And there is no seasonality that I'm aware of for the Canadian small caps. I can look it up, but uh, I didn't. I, I haven't traditionally um, found anything, but maybe uh, some of the seasonal guys have been uh, exploring this, this area on the Canadian stocks. But on the US side, because it's a well-traded market, the small caps and this particular ETF, which is the iShares Russell 2000 uh, ETF, IWM is the ticker. It's very, very well traded. It's highly liquid. So I just want to read from Brooke Zachary's book. Now this is his 23 book, not his new 24 book, but it's going to be fairly similar. And what you would see is that the small caps outperform the market from about mid-December to about mid-March. As you can see that, I've outlined that right here, if you can see it. So uh, uh, that was in yellow. So whatever the case, if, if the market tends to favor small caps between mid-December and mid-March, that would kind of make sense, wouldn't it? Because here's December of 23, and you can see basically this line here, the vertical line is the beginning of 24, and really from December to now, the market's been pretty kind to the small caps, all right? So this makes sense that uh, we're now coming to the end of the season for small caps. And you can see, if we go down to some of the momentum indicators, they're rolling over. So this is money flow momentum. It really looks at the amount of money flowing into a stock or an ETF or a sector. And because this one is so widely traded, the IWM that is, it's a really good benchmark for the small caps in the US. And you can see that they're falling out of favor again. Money is flowing out of them. And that's indicated here because the momentum is slowing on money flow. You can also see the volumes declining. So you see you had that rising trend, but volume has declined steadily through that rising trend, meaning it probably wouldn't last for long. And you can see that on the money flow momentum. Now, MACD, when you look at the two lines is trending up, but take a look at the histogram, which is good for you detectives out there to take a look at the histogram. It tells you a little bit ahead of time of what might happen with the MACD. You can see it has been moving down, the histogram that is, and the bands are squeezing. So that probably tells us that again, price momentum in this case is slowing down. Now, MACD uses two different moving averages and compares the differences, but it is really still just a measurement of a price trend, okay? Uh, last but not least is RSI, which is the, one of the classic 
price momentum indicators and it's gone totally flat. So this move, you could say it's diverging negatively against the move because the move has been positive on the Russell 2000, the IWM ETF, but it has not been positive for any of these momentum indicators over that period. So it's a warning sign and maybe um, per Brooke Thackeray's observations about the small caps after March, uh, maybe we're going to see this sector pull back to the neckline. At some point though, based on standard technical analysis, you'd think that if the, the sector or the ETF touched the neckline, which lies somewhere around the moving average, probably around uh, 195 bucks or so, if that were to be tested successfully, then you could probably expect at some point another rally in the future. But for the time being, it's telling us that maybe it's a little long in the tooth, this rally. Now, on the other side though, there is plenty of upside if it does retest and then move back to its, its old highs of late 22. So keep that in mind. But I think with seasonality and the indicators we're seeing on the chart, it's not necessarily the best play right now, despite that breakout. So now let's take a look at the uh, Canadian um, ETFs. And it is, uh, the iShares has one as well. XCS is the ticker on Toronto and it's the Canadian small cap ETF. So I'm just gonna push update and here we go. All right, now very, very similar pattern except for one thing, well, except for a couple of things. First of all, after that, sideways pattern that occurred kind of over the same period, uh, you know, from 22 and on, you saw a breakout, but that breakout is is really moving along and, and not too far off of its old highs. All right, another thing I want you to notice is that momentum is not rolling over. Remember the money flow indicator we looked at for the Russell 2000? Well, it was already rounding down against an uprising market, but the money flow momentum indicator here is still moving up, all right? In MACD, here's the histogram. Remember I showed you how the histogram can give us a little bit of a clue as to what the MACD itself might be doing. Well, you can see the bands are actually separating, which is good, and the histogram is moving up. So again, there is, there is muscle behind the Canadian names, and last but not least, RSI, which has definitely moved up. Yes, it's a bit overbought, but stocks, as you can see, can sometimes stay overbought for a while, just like they did way back in 2021, okay? So all seems like a better picture for the Canadian uh, small caps. Now, why that might be is because of the sector breakdown. So we did talk about the Russell 2000. It's made up of 1,955 stocks, but and I'm gonna stop sharing now because I, I just wanna uh, concentrate on some facts and figures. The Russell 2000 is almost 2,000 stocks. It's basically 64% represented between, 62% um, I should say, between industrials, financials, healthcare, and uh, internet technology. But of those four sectors, they're all pretty evenly spaced out. Like if you look at industrials, there's 17% of that index, financials 15%, healthcare 15%, and internet technology 15%. So even though there is a concentration in four sectors in the market, there's not one particular sector that's overweight. Now let's contrast and compare that to the iShares Canadian ETF, the XCS uh, ETF, and that's 30% materials. And then it's got another 22% in energy. And finally, the last 12% uh, or so in the top names are the industrials, 64%. So pretty close, both, both of these ETFs have 64% spread over a few sectors, but in this case, it's three sectors versus four on the Russell. And there's clearly between two of those three sectors I just mentioned, the uh, ener sorry, uh, energy and materials, we're talking basically over 50% of the market is invested in those two sectors. Now that does explain when we go back to that chart for the XCS, why it's moved so strongly and why the momentum indicators are not rolling over yet because materials right now are on fire. And if you've been following my work, you know, I've been talking about materials and energy for several months now. So don't say I didn't tell you ahead of time. So it's no surprise to me that the Canadian small cap uh, sector looks better than the US small cap sector. 
I don't know about the seasonals, but given that three quarters, or I should say 60% of the index is concentrated in materials and energy and, and to some point industrials, these sectors are all actually in favor, including industrials, right out until the spring. So if I were to bet my money on the small cap sectors, I'd probably be looking in the Canadian side for now, and then switch over to the Russell 2000 if, as, and when materials and energy uh, get past their seasonal period of, of performance. So I hope that helps. Kind of short and sweet, just one topic, but I think it might give you some ideas of where to look for your next investment candidates. Thanks for watching. We'll be back next week.